Right, this time the Cuck Speed Shop, I'm out here in the backyard. I've uncovered my 1934 doodle bug. This thing has been sitting here derelict for about 10 months here, sinking in the yard. I'm gonna get some gas and a battery. Will it start? We're gonna find out right now. I'm a professional, don't try this at home. Bam, here we go. Ah, I'm all tangled up in the trees. I swear when I, I parked this thing here back uh, last October, so it's been about 10 months, these trees were only going back into here and you could, you could see the whole thing. These trees have grown like a foot since I put it back here 10 months ago. Well, that's crazy. But anyways, here's a doodle bug. And uh, it's been slowly just sitting here chilling. Didn't really hurt it sitting out here. This thing's probably sat outside its entire life, so sitting outside for 10 more months was gonna hurt it. Hopefully my paint didn't get ruined. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, let's uncover this. I'll get the battery out, get the gas out. It should fire right up, but you never know how this stuff's gonna be. We'll see, we'll find out. Let me take you around back and I'll pull the tarp and stuff off it. I got the tarp screwed to the plywood here that I've been holding this down with, so. Uh, I'm going to flap it Just so you know, the Harbor Freight bungee cords only last about 10 months out in the weather before they get completely shot. Oh, everything's still here. Perfect. What in the world? Well, it held up good here being all covered up. Um, didn't get any mice or any damage. The paint's all still on it. That's good. This is just rattle can action from uh, Rust-Oleum Green Rattle Can action. So that held up. I'm sure it's out of gas. Oh, there's a little in there. I don't know. That's the gas gauge right there on a the Model A. Let's take a look at the engine. It's also here, there's, yeah, there's some gas in the fuel bulb. I think I gotta add some more gas to the tank. It's sitting here. I planned ahead for storing this thing. Um, I welded a metal screen in the exhaust so no mice can get in the exhaust because that's what ruined the old engine. The choke is closed, so there shouldn't be any critters in anywhere. Everything looks good on here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the gas, pour a little bit of gas in it, and hook up the battery, and she should fire up. If you haven't seen the build series on this, I rescued this off a, uh, a hill down by uh, Cuca Lake. And it was an old doodle bug that had been used to move boats around. It had hitches front and rear. Um, it just had a wooden flat deck on it and one seat and it was all derelict and rusted. The front wheels are rusted off it. I actually built those wheels. They're early uh, Ford AA uh, 1930 wheels. Center is cut out and welded in some 16 inch bud wheels. I had to do those just to get some rollers. The rear wheels are 24 inch wooden spoke uh, Silvertown Goodrich high cleat tractor tires from the 1940s, 1950s. They're super old and super rare. The rear end is a Timken Detroit rear end that would have been in like a Sexton truck or if you're building like a cabin chassis, you would order this rear end. This thing is huge. They could have, t it's a worm drive. <clears throat> it's got four mechanical brakes on it only the rear two shoes are hooked up but it's four four mechanical shoes this is i've only seen one other one in the 1926 sexton truck and uh this is i don't know what rear end this 
what truck this came out of, but if you're building like an ambulance or a, like a dump truck or something, you would have built your chassis, then ordered this rear end from Timken Detroit uh, Axle Company. So it's super rare. It's got to be about 100 years old right now. The, the wheels and the rear end have to be close to 100 years old. The box I built for my Model A hot rod shop truck when that was more like a rat rod type setup. Um, it's original 29 tailgate. And then I made the sides so it fit perfect on this on this doodle bug. So I slapped it up on here. I got a couple of uh, bus seats here. I needed room for the dual shifters. This thing has two four speed. Uh, whoop, now it's rolling. Hold on. That's first gear. It's got two four speed Ford transmissions. This is the stock uh, AA uh, granny low four speed uh, Model A truck rear end. And then there's a mid 30s Ford big truck uh, transmission in the middle. And I updated it with a late 1940s shifter with the internal detent for the reverse so I don't have to use the flip lever to go in reverse like I do on the front transmission. Then I just rattle can restoed the front of it. But it is a 1930 ton and a half truck, a double A cut down, welded up rear suspension made into like a tractor. That's what a doodle bug is. So I built this thing. If you want to check out on the channel uh, a couple years ago, look in the... Uh, the doodle bug build series there you can see me put this whole thing together change the engine and all that it's kind of like a big model but super cool and uh we're gonna fire it up and drive it over there and park it in the gas station so model a fords they didn't have a fuel pump they used gravity and your your, your cowl was the gas tank i think they're about 10 12 gallons something like that so you rode around with the gas right above, hold on right above your lap which actually I'm not too worried about it. Like if I had a stock Model A Ford, it's a pretty safe spot for the gas tank actually, as long as it doesn't rupture. But you think about it, it's way up in the air in the middle of the car and it's out of a collision zone for a lot of places. Then in 1932, they went to fuel pumps and they put the tank out back behind the car and you, uh, you saw the, the tank mounted, you know, not in the passenger compartment anymore. Later on, they'd be in the trunk and stuff like that. Well, actually in the, uh, in a uh, in the trucks from the 60s and 70s, they put them still in the cab. But the Ford cars, they were by 1931. It was last year for the cowl mounted gas tank. So put a little bit of gas in her and uh, get the battery going. We'll see if she fires up. Well, we got her gassed up there. Here's a little bit, I don't know if the gauge is going to move, but put like a gallon or two in there. Now watch here, this uh, fuel bowl, um, there's a fuel shut off here on the bottom of the tank. When I open that, it, it will let fuel into the fuel bowl already. Here we go. Aha! Bam! So now we've got fuel going down to the carburetor. Hopefully it won't come pouring out of it. I'm gonna shut the fuel off for now until I get the battery in it, but it's it's gravity feed down into the, uh, this is a cast iron Zenith carburetor. They had uh, two models on the Model A40, you had a Zenith carburetor, cast iron, or you had an aluminum Tillerson. This is the, uh, the Zenith carburetor here. And it's not too bad, it should work. Hopefully the float's not stuck. But we'll throw the battery in it. Here's your choke rod here, which pulls the choke on open and closed. That's here and uh, you've got your starter button over here that you push down to operate the starter here's your throttle clutch and brake like a standard the ford the model a's are the first year for the standard style transmission the model t fords had a planetary with three pedals but this is the the modern style setup here so she should be all ready to go. I'll get the battery. I can't remember if I charge it, so I got charging for a minute here. I'm gonna charge that up and uh, slap it in the back. I'm spinning the starter on 12 volts, but then I have a ballast resistor to knock it down to six because these uh, Model A Fords, and I think all Fords up to like 1954 maybe, were a uh, uh, six volt positive ground, which meant the positive turbo went to the ground is just the battery, um, what do you call it, was backwards. The polarity was backwards. But well, you can run this. I'm, I'm spinning the starter on 12 for a short little burst. It's fine. And then I've got a ballast resistor to knock the voltage from, from uh, 12 down to 6 so I can run the, the 6 volt ignition. So 
I'll put the battery in it. <laughs> Crap out here. I'll put the battery in it and we'll go from there. Okay, I charge up the battery. I'm going to climb on here and give her a go and see what happens. That transmission in second. This guy neutral. Turn ignition on. Turn my fuel on. Ah, crap. Hold on a second. Ah. Choke rod came unhooked. Let's try it again. this thing under a pine tree. Oh, she fired already. Here we go.
Oh, I hear she's boiling. Oh no, not good. She's a boiling. Woo! Well, I had this problem before. This thing, uh, either the water pump is shot or the radiator is plugged up. It, I can't run it very long or it gets hot. And uh, she's starting to boil over right now. Here she goes. Well, at least I got it in here under cover now. Yeah, it's puking out the overflow down there. It's boiling under the cap here. I got her hot. That's not good. Whew. I got I never rebuilt the water pump when I did it. I uh, you can get the rebuild kits for those. I uh, I don't made the impellers bad. I got to put a water pump in it. But she she's definitely boiling. I hear it. You hear it? There we go. I gotta let this old girl cool down. She's uh, way hot. I've either gotta use another radiator or like. So I got some cooling issues with this thing. That's why I haven't really been using it that much. It was only running about 10 minutes and it overheated it. So uh, I've got some tinkering around to do. My uh, Model A tow truck with the same setup, you know, stock Model A engine runs cool all day. So there's something going on with this radiator or that water pump, or there's something going on in the block. But she's a boil and I can hear it. So I'm gonna let her cool down now, but you saw that thing fired right off immediately. These old Fords, they always start no matter how long they've been sitting. Even this one's got a little bit of carburetor issues, but she popped off like that. And that's super awesome. So we had a little bit of fun getting the old doodle bug out today. I got her in here under the gas station overhang, undercover where she'll be safe out of the weather. So thanks guys for watching. Had, a, had another great video today. Make sure you tell your friends to subscribe and I'll see you next time right here at the Quick Speed Shop.